coming up. Disney removes a mask rule for the first time. The final harmonious barge is installed in the World Showcase Lagoon in Epcot. And Disney gives us a look at the next deluxe resort room refurbishment. All that and more on the way. This is Mickey Views News. All who come to this happy place, welcome. Now I'm the king of the swingers, oh, the jungle VIP. I've reached the top and had to stop and that's what's bothering me. First up in the news today, we have a breaking story that many people are very, very excited about. Disney has finally updated their park rules on their website in regards to facial coverings, specifically when you can take off your mask at Walt Disney World, which now reads as follows. Face coverings are required for all guests ages two and up and cast members still, but along with being able to temporarily remove your face covering while actively eating or drinking while stationary, now, starting when many of you are seeing this video, you can now take off your mask at Walt Disney World for an outdoor photo. With Disney adding, quote, you must be stationary and maintain appropriate physical distancing during this time when you have your mask off. An interesting development here, covering what's going on in the parks during this very odd time. I can't tell you how many times I've seen the scene, especially on Main Street and by Cinderella Castle, where you have a family or a group that tries taking a photo, you know, and a few of them, they pull down their masks or something like that to smile. Disney pays cash members wear their job, they are tasked with walking around, confronting guests, telling them, please put your masks back up, enforcing the rules. So now that Disney's changing this rule where you can take your mask off for a photo, it should immediately be an improvement for all those cast members that have had to deal with all this for many, many months at this point, giving them a little vacation here, as well as an improvement looking at the guest experience end of things, where now guests that want to take a normal photo, smiling with their family at Walt Disney World, officially can do so. Upon further media requests for comments, Disney elaborated on this change, confirming that Disney PhotoPass photographers, which currently will only take photos of guests, of course, if they have their masks on, will begin taking photos of guests with no facial coverings starting on April 8th. I have to say there are people online that are concerned that this will lead to guests exploiting the rule, and as such, Disney might end up having to reverse this change entirely. To me, the fact that Disney is even making this change, demonstrating the fact that they want to actually lift some of the current restrictions at Walt Disney World, finally turning from adding more rules in the parks to less, that alone makes me excited for what is hopefully a return to normalcy at this resort that we know and love. Let me know what you guys think about this change. Over in Epcot, taking a look at the World Showcase Lagoon, we have a couple of updates to news developments that we've been covering lately. We just posted our April Epcot construction tour video, where at the time of filming, when I filmed that at the start of April here, all but one of the LED screen barges for the new Harmonious Nighttime Spectacular had been installed permanently in the lagoon and yesterday when guests went into the park the barge on the Italy Germany side had been finally floated out overnight and locked in now completing the installation of the major barges in the lagoon here for the new harmonious nighttime spectacular now something I've yet to touch on in our Epcot specific construction vlogs are the little barges that Disney's been adding to the lagoon from which the fireworks will launch the firework barges these little barges are one of the things that is going to need daily service by the team that runs this show, uh, where they're actually going to have to put in the new shells and the mortars and stuff like that. So it'll be very interesting to see how they're going to do all that, how they're going to do daily maintenance on this show, uh, where currently the plan is during the day, the harmonious barges are going to be spraying water. There's going to be mist going all over the place, uh, trying to create a fountain effect in the middle of the World Showcase Lagoon. So how exactly are the teams going to be able to work on that uh, if, you know, it's always spraying water? I think what's going to happen is they are going to have to turn off uh, the water feature of the barge for part of the day. But we we really don't know exactly how it's going to work just yet. Safe to say Disney is doing a lot out there in the lagoon. There's a lot of technology involved, a lot of cool infrastructure. Now it's more of a matter of what is Disney going to do with it and when are we going to see fireworks come back to Walt Disney World? Just something I wanted to touch on there. Besides the mask change, which on its own might sort of seem small and inconsequential to some of you, slightly changing the rules there where now you can take a photo outside with your mask down. The big news to me is the direction the change is going. It points towards further changes in the direction towards returning things to normal. I think that's what makes it a big story. The other 
other big news I wanted to talk about today is this official look Disney just released of the newly refurbished Wilderness Lodge rooms. Like the Polynesian Resort we recently took a look at, the Wilderness Lodge is also undergoing a resort-wide transformation updating the guest rooms with a new modern style. The resort will be back in full operational capacity this June, and here is your look at the new room design you have at the Wilderness Lodge. As you can see, it's much in the style of the Pop Century room refurbishment we got a few years ago that then came to the All-Star Resorts, the Grandestino Tower, and now it's reaching the deluxe resorts at Walt Disney World, like the Polynesian with the Moana styling, and here with the Wilderness Lodge, featuring those white beds on very Ikea-esque modern furnishings, with the carpeting replaced with a hard floor, with small details in the room reminding you of where you are staying. It seems a common theme throughout all these room designs is wallpaper. At the Grandestino rooms, you have this very particular wallpaper pattern on the wall. We're seeing that also at the Polynesian rooms with that very in-your-face, that very bold Moana styling on that wallpaper. And in the case of the Wilderness Lodge, its wallpaper is this tree graphic uh, featuring Chip and Dale. Let me know what you guys think about what we're seeing here. We've already discussed recently the idea of Disney homogenizing the rooms, where as they make all of the rooms across property this new style, it makes more sense just to stay at a moderate room or a value room with this modern style than a deluxe, where now it seems like location might be one of the only major differences to weigh between these rooms. The rooms look so similar, you no longer have that huge aesthetic and room quality difference between the Wilderness Lodge and the Pop Century as an example, where they used to look much, much different and be at much different tiers quality-wise. This time, I would like to hone in on how, while at the value resorts, this style room update is a huge improvement. My opinion is it might be a downgrade on the other end at some of the deluxe resorts where you homogenize all the rooms across property, you lose things like looking at the previous rooms that these are replacing at the Wilderness Lodge. Uh, where this is now being replaced by this new Ikea look. If you look at what it's replacing, it's replacing these beds where the headboards had these incredible wood carved nature scenes on them that look like if you went in and painted them, they look like real life. The detail you have in this room here, these old rooms at the Wilderness Lodge, it's on par with the detail you see in the Disney parks. That quintessential gradient in my mind that makes Disney Disney is that attention to detail. And I don't need to highlight everything that makes this old room design so worth paying to be in. There's so much stuff to look at, so much to discover in these rooms. It's an atmosphere in and of itself. Now, it's this modern flat iPhone, iOS style that says to you, please leave. This room is not an attraction. You know, don't look at me. Just go to sleep and go spend money in the parks. That's what this room says to me. That's just my personal opinion. And if you're someone who likes these new modern room updates, you know, they're very clean. They do look nice in a certain way. I know a lot of people really like these, especially in the case of the Polynesian, where I think a lot of people weren't particularly fans of the last guest room refurbishment uh, they had there with that green style you had. Some people prefer uh, the Moana over that, which I understand. What I really like is the DVC rooms, speaking of the Polynesian. To really drive home the point I'm making here to those people who say, I like this modern style uh, coming to the deluxe resorts, I would say, look at the Grand Floridian. The Grand Floridian is supposed to be a Victorian era resort. Victorian era rooms and furnishings. Now, Disney's gotten rid of the band that the lobby was acoustically designed for and replaced it with a French bar with modern furnishings based around Beauty and the Beast, uh, really having no relation to the theme of the resort. And this room modernization push we're seeing come everywhere else is inevitably going to be coming to the Grand Floridian, Disney's flagship resort in the near future. And I would just say, imagine a Victorian resort where you're supposed to escape to another time, but now Disney decides the rooms are of an old style. They aren't modern. We need to make these modern, as if that's not literally the theme of the resort. Uh, the fact that the rooms aren't modern, the fact that the resort is of another time. It's supposed to be like that. And it's not to say that the clean and modern Ikea style is bad for what it is. It's to say you can get that at any hotel anywhere these days. You can even get it cheap on Walt Disney World property now. Why on earth would you pay $1,000 per night for something like we're seeing come to the Poly and the Wilderness right now, and then we're going to see it come to the Contemporary, and then the final frontier to really drive home the current lack of understanding in the product, the Victorian era Grand Floridian likely getting the same style, the same update with this very modern Apple Store style that we're seeing come everywhere else. What Disney is selling is a unique experience. And I know the executives think what makes it unique is the intellectual property, the characters. That's what makes Disney unique. And that is no doubt part of it. But in the case of the Disney parks, it's also the atmosphere and the environments, the escapism and making all the resorts look the same in the name of keeping up with the Joneses. The Joneses in this case, I suspect, are the very similar updates we're seeing over at the Las Vegas hotels. I suspect there's a lot of overlap between the people who are doing those 
the people who are doing these here at Walt Disney World. The resorts at Disney are changing big time here. And as I said last time we talked about this, it really comes down to seeing the long-term bookings at these resorts that'll really be the judge. And it's entirely possible I'm in the vast minority of people uh, who really cares about these rooms being extensions of the Disney level attention to detail you have in the parks. You know, it's very possible that nobody cares. There's no change in bookings, no negative guest feedback. People gladly spend a thousand dollars a night, you know, to stay at these rooms, you know, and they think they're very Disney because it has the Moana label on it or the Beauty and the Beast label on it or Chip and Dale, whatever it is, right? Disney's taken a lot of amenities away in the last year. We can go down the list of them. And as CEO Bob Chapek recently highlighted, guest satisfaction right now in their surveys, it's at historic highs. So it may just be the case that Disney literally can do no wrong and really anything they do, guests are going to end up liking and guests are going to keep coming no matter what. So we're going to stay on top of what happens. Uh, we'll see how this all goes. Be sure to subscribe with those notifications on so you don't miss any of the future news developments. We'll see if we get any more facial covering policy changes. And if we do, I'll bring those to you right here as soon as we do. Also, one last thing about the rooms that I like to bring up. We haven't seen the inside of the contemporary rooms yet, the contemporary room design, the Incredibles rooms. And I'm really holding out hope for a very mid-century style here with subtle Incredibles design accents, modernizing the contemporary resort rooms. That's what the resort's theme is about, being contemporary. So I think the contemporary room update has the best potential uh, for seeing one of these new deluxe room updates actually elevate the quality and the aesthetics of the resort itself. So I'll have to wait and see how that turns out. The nightmare scenario is if, you know, you look at the room and spanning the entire length of the bedroom, you know, there's an abstract shape of Elastigirl as a wallpaper on the wall. You know, it's sort of what we're seeing with some of these other room updates. I'm really hoping that's not the case. I am cautiously optimistic to see how those contemporary rooms turn out. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Fingers crossed on that one. For the Mickey Muse Magic Studio, this is Brayden. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Have a magical day.